Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So, sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes 3rd Edition, and we're doing problem number 3.47. I'll read the problem statement. An orifice meter, see figure 3.2-1, is to be calibrated for the measurement of the flow rate of a stream of liquid acetone. The differential manometer, fluid, has a specific gravity of 1.10. Then they give a diagram, which I've replicated over here. The calibration is accomplished by connecting the orifice meter in series with a rotometer that has previously been calibrated for acetone, adjusting a valve to set the flow rate and recording the flow rate determined from the rotometer reading and the rotometer calibration curve and the differential manometer reading H. The procedure is repeated for several valve settings to generate an orifice meter calibration curve of flow rate versus H. The following data are taken, and I've replicated the data here. Part A, for each of the given readings, calculate the pressure drop across the orifice, delta P, in millimeters of mercury. First off, let's take a look at this drawing here. So we've got a pump here and the pump is applying pressure to this line but we can choke the pressure in the line by having a pressure drop with this valve that slows down the flow rate and uh, then we've got an orifice meter right here with a manometer attached to either end and then the the pressure on this side of the orifice will be less will be higher than the pressure on this side of the orifice and you can see that's why delta H is, the, the H is lower here and the lo liquid level is higher here, so. Okay, then the flow rate comes out through here and then this is the rotometer that measures the flow rate over here. So you're kind of measuring the flow rate in two spots and you're using the value from this measurement to be able to calibrate what the pressure drop um, correlates to a certain um, flow rate through this orifice meter, okay? Um, I wrote down the properties of the liquids that we will probably need. Um, so I just got acetone from the back of the book. You can write down the density. I also wrote down the uh, molar mass because I was thinking, you know, if we're working in flow rates, they generally, sometimes they'll ask you to do um, conversions into mass flow rate from volumetric and then from volumetric to mass to molar. So we may need that. So we need to calculate what the pressure differential is across the orifice meter. Okay, and in order to do that, um, we just look at the manometer reading. Um, so delta P equals, delta P equals rho G H. Well, this looks like a computer problem, so let's just move over to the computer from here. All right, so I've replicated the data that they gave to us in the book and put it here. Now, these units are not necessarily very friendly, um, so let's change H into meters. Okay, and we want to know what delta P is. So delta P, delta P is rho GH, like we said before. Okay, so Let's write down our constants over on the left. So we have our density of the manometer fluid and we have gravity. So delta P equals rho G H. And our density and gravity don't change. So we'll put dollar signs next to that and drag that down. Notice how I used H is in meters when I did this calculation and not in millimeters. That's so that our calculation is in pascals. We can convert pascals into um, millimeters of mercury by dividing by that and multiplying by that. OK, 
Okay, and that's the conversion factor for that. So now that's part A. We have all of our delta P measurements in millimeters of mercury. All right, so for part B, it says the flow rate through an orifice should be related to the pressure drop across the orifice by the formula V equals K times delta P to the M. Verify graphically that the given orifice calibration data are correlated by this relationship and determine the values of K and N that best fit the data. Okay, well, we want to turn this into what we've done before in this book is we've turned all of these problems into a linear model first. Um, in this one we have two parameters and it's a exponential or an exponent relationship here so we can just take a log, a log log plot of this data and that should give us a straight line. Alright, let's move back over to our writing here. Okay, so we have this relationship that they gave to us and we want to turn this into a linear model. There are other ways you can solve for k and n without turning this into a linear model, but because this is the procedure that they've given to us in this book, um, and it's a pretty good setup for this, um, we can just go ahead and use the linear model. So we'll use a linear model, which means we'll take a log of this equation, both sides, and we get that the log of the volumetric flow rate is equal to log k plus n times log delta p. Now, the, uh, we need to turn this into a linear model, so we say, what's y? Well, y is the natural log of the volumetric flow rate, and then we've got x, which is the natural log of delta p. Our slope is n, and our intercept is the natural log of k. Okay, so then we can use the data that they gave to us in order to solve for what the parameters k and n are using our linear model. So let's go ahead and do that on the computer. Okay, so we've moved over to the computer here, and you see I've added a column. We've got our data, so y that is based on the data, and then we'll have a y that's based on the model. And we'll compare the two in order to um, see how good our fit is and make a chart so you can see it visually, a graph. Okay, so y according to our data we know that y is equal to the natural log of v we get an we get an error for the first value because um, you can't take the natural log of zero it's not defined in that range so the numbers that we get on this first row are not going to be helpful but we can still use the rest of the data we were given x is equal to the natural log of delta p. Let's use our millimeters of mercury and drag that down. And then we've got our model, which is equal to y is equal to m times x plus b. We want to make sure that our parameters are the same for each one of these values, so we'll add the dollar signs. And these are all zero because our parameters, right now we don't have anything in there, so let's add a one and a one just to get us fairly close. Okay, so now we have our parameters for our model, but they're not great. As you can see, it's not close, so we need to calculate m is our slope so Excel has a function because there is an analytical solution to to um, calculating what the slope is of a line given a certain number of data points it's the sum of least squares so we've got our known y's here and we've got our known x's here from the data and then we also can calculate our intercept Excel also has a function for this. We've got our y's and our x's. All right, so now we have our slope and our intercept defined. And now our model seems to match pretty well. It's not exact, but it matches pretty well. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and get a, a visual on this. So let's make a 
chart. Let's do this thing over here and select data. And we'll have our data, which is X and Y. Okay, and then we'll add, we have our model here, which is X here and these Y. Okay. And then we'll edit our, our, uh, do we want to edit our model or our data? Let's, there we go. We've got our, our uh, data selected. And let's say no line, and let's turn these into markers. So, marker options, let's do built in. There we go. Turn them into blue squares. So, there you go, those are our data. Let's add a legend to the bottom so you can see that better. So, we've got our data and we've got our model, and they match pretty well. Okay, so now. Finally, we need to calculate what K and N are. So we know from our model before that B is equal to the natural log of K. So if we take the exponent of B, that is what K is, and N is equal to M. So that is what N equals. Okay, so those are the parameters that they asked us to define in part B. Great, so that's it for part B. Let's move on to part C. Suppose the orifice meter is mounted in a process line containing acetone and a reading H equals 23 millimeters is obtained. Determine the volumetric, mass, and molar flow rates of acetone in the line. Okay, so let's move back over to our writing. So we've got H is equal to 23 millimeters. Well, we can just go through, um, convert that into meters, so this equals 0 0.023 meters, and then we can convert that into a certain delta p using our function that we used before. And then we, given a certain delta p, we can calculate um, what v is based on our uh, model that we just defined. So we use our model. We say, you know, what is delta V given this certain H? Well, we need to know what delta P is. So we calculate what the delta P is in millimeters of mercury. Make sure it's millimeters of mercury because remember our model was defined using millimeters of mercury. So K has certain units assuming that you're using millimeters of mercury and it spits out milliliters per second in its volumetric flow rate. So remember, the units are important to keep track of here. Okay, so we use our model, we defined K and N, and so then we calculate that the volumetric flow rate is 132 millime milliliters per second. Okay, so then we just need to convert these into a mass flow rate and a molar flow rate using the uh, relationships that we got out of the back of the book. So mass flow rate, we convert this into units of length, and then different volume, and then we multiply by the density, and then we get kilograms per second. Or you could change that into grams per second, whatever, I just, they didn't give us a unit that we needed to put it in, so I just put it in kilograms per second. Then we've got our molar flow rate, and the molar flow rate is equal to mass flow rate divided by the molar mass. And then we do the conversions here, and we calculate that the molar flow rate is 1.8 moles per second. And that is it for part C and problem number 3.47. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.